Hi, good evening, everyone. Good evening. And thank you so much for braving the, I guess, the, the semi-cold. But this is a blessing compared to what we've been through. <laughs> so, so we just say thank you so much for, for being here. My name is Jaira Placide, and I'm the Associate Director of the Institute of African American Affairs here on campus. And my, um, I'd just like to thank, again, you for being here, our staff at IAAA, especially um, Megan Gorins, who's helping out at Parada at the video, um, Linda Morgan, and also Iris Cofield, and then our uh, Director Mancha Dior for helping us put together this um, really, really great program. So I'm having to see you all here. We're small and intimate, and a lot of good things happen when you come into small spaces and you ask like great questions. So my time up here will be brief. I'm just going to tell you a little bit of background about um, the Brother to Brother, Sister to Sister series, and then introduce our um, moderator for the evening, Angelique V. Nixon. The Institute of African American Affairs at New York University wanted to devote a year-long event on lectures, poetry readings, and film screenings with key figures, as well as emerging stars of the LGBTQ intelligentsia. By holding these conversations, our hope is to foster a better understanding of love, marriage, and relationships within the LGBTQ community. At a time when LGBTQ issues are openly being considered in mainstream consciousness, it prompts us to rethink the boundaries and conceptual paradigms surrounding the production of cultural knowledge from the perspectives of LGBTQ artists, scholars, and activists. At issue are the ways in which LGBTQ, uh, LGBTQ writers and activists of color have been defining and expressing themselves. These conversations will be an exploration into the many narratives that examine and reveal perceptions, attitudes, continuous negotiations or renegotiations, and creative systems of survival. So the questions that we generally posed out to everyone who was invited to be on, on these panel is, um, among some others, are what are the new questions and challenges posed by their works via both the personal and the public? What does it mean to write from that perspective and explore various themes both within and outside the prescribed categories of gender, race, which also includes issues of representation, racism, and homophobia? What are the processes that permit or discourage changes in our understanding of the kinds of narratives the LGBTQ produce? We also hope that these lectures and performances will provide our students and colleagues, faculty, the community with insights on the rich and complex fabric of national identities beyond race, class, origins, and gender. And this is actually, um, we started the series last year, and we had people like um, Thomas Allen Harris, Linnell Moise, Bill Wright, Sharon Bridgeforth, Jewel Gomez, Lorenzo Herrera E. Lorenzo, and all this, I believe, is, is available for you to see on our website at uh, nyuiaa.org. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you um, our moderator, Angelique Nixon. I like Angelique a lot, because <laughs> she smiles a lot. <laughs> She's a good person. <laughs> so Angelique Nick V. Nixon is a writer, artist, teacher, scholar, activist, and poet born and raised in the Bahamas. She is committed to the struggle for gender, racial, and sexual equality, and social and environmental justice. Angelique earned her PhD in English, specializing in Caribbean literature, post-colonial studies, and women and gender studies at the University of Florida. And she also completed her um, a postdoctoral fellowship here at NYU at the Africana Studies Program, which, which I was, had the pleasure of meeting her then, uh, like four years ago, 2010, 2009. Currently, she is an assistant professor in the Department of English and Creative Writing at Susquehanna University in Central Pennsylvania. She is the, in the final stages of publishing her scholarly book entitled Resistance, Paradise, Tourism, Diaspora, and Sexuality in Caribbean Literature and Culture. She is author of the poetry and art collection Saltwater Healing, a myth memoir and poems published with Caribbean Small Press Poinciana, Poinciana Paper Press. 
But also equally important is the activist part, which is something that we try and, and talk about here in, in this space. Angelique works with a number of community-based organizations, including Critical Resistance and, and the Grassroots Healing Collective, IET Resurrect, as a core organizer of her 2012 and 2014 delegations to Leogan, Haiti. Also, she is a co-chair of the Caribbean IRN, International Resource Network, which connects activists, researchers, and artists who do work on diverse genders and sexualities. She is on the working board of directors for the Center for Lesbian and Gay Studies at City College of New York, CUNY, which fosters intellectual leadership, scholarship, as well as community events. Angelique strives through her writing and activism to disrupt, disrupt silences, challenge systems of oppression, and carve spaces for resistance and desire. She is the perfect moderator for tonight. Thank you so much, Angelique Nixon. Thank you all so much for being here. It's so wonderful to get to moderate. I feel so honored and really thrilled to be here and be able to moderate this conversation. And so as a way to start uh, and introduce all of these amazing, beautiful people, uh, I wanted to share some thoughts that I've had and have worked through in my own writing about what it means to resist and how we think about creativity and how we also think about representation uh, in our work. And uh, I wanna start with two quotes uh, that I've sort of grappled with in thinking about my own battles and being in the academy. Uh, one is by Walter Rodney. <clears throat> And I quote, I felt somehow that being a revolutionary intellectual might be a goal to which one might aspire, for surely there was no real reason why one should remain in the academic world, that is, remain an intellectual and at the same time not be a revolutionary. And the other is Sylvia Winter. And I quote, So what our consciousness has been battling against the regime of truth, which has structured our consciousness, is functioning against our best interests. It is negating ourselves, and so there's a constant struggle. You see, it's not just an intellectual struggle. You could call it a psycho-intellectual struggle. And so these two quotes made me really think about my own place within uh, the academy and doing the kind of work I do on the intersections of all of these places. And so. Uh, I'll just share a little bit of that with you. I started writing poetry in my early 20s as a way to work through my sense of self and my place in the world. It was, as Audre Lorde says, a matter of survival. Poetry is not a luxury. It is a way to speak, to heal, to share, to process. Later, I started actively using poetry as my tool for community work and activism. It became part of my resistance, as June Jordan puts it, my self-determination. And so I define myself boldly as writer, artist, teacher, scholar, activist, poet, and also community worker, subversive, radical, cynical, idealist, polyrhythmic, polyamorous, lover, cosmic warrior, Afro-Caribbean, black, queer, bisexual, woman-loving woman, troublemaker, revolutionary intellectual in progress. All this means I work actively to put my body where my politics are, which I define as being in the crossroads of black liberation, queer, feminist, decolonial, and transformative. This means working against heterosexist patriarchy, white supremacy, and capitalism. It means staying in the struggle for social and environmental justice, for sexual, gender, class, and racial equality. It means being in the tradition of women of color and post-colonial writers and feminists and all our ancestors who resisted before and when our revolutions were thought impossible, who resisted and asserted our right to theorize our own experience, to rewrite histories and histories and make ourselves whole. Revolution means struggle, but it also means healing and radical self-care and love. It also means taking incredible risks and being a warrior at times alone but, and afraid, but rooted and guided by spirit and earth. And so I believe that I am and aspire to be, as Walter Rodney suggests, a revolutionary intellectual in radical process. I agree, I agree with him completely. It is the only reason for me to remain in the academy, even as I struggle to be in it. 
I hold his words close as I make sense of my years and discomfort in the academy. I think about my travel since I started graduate school. I think about the mobility and access to places and people I may never have had if I didn't get my academic hustle on and funding to present at conferences around the world, from Brazil to France and all over the United States and across the Caribbean, my home spaces, places I have come to know and love because of the opportunities afforded me through the academic world. And I remember me as a little girl who dared to dream that I could be something other than poor and troubled, and that maybe one day I could leave Nassau and travel. And I remember when I found out that there was a thing called university. I wanted to go, even when I dropped out of high school. I dreamed and worked hard and took advantages of opportunities that came my way, knowing that they came with a price and that some of these had something to do with my light skin, my mixed raceness, and silence about race and class, while others came when I stopped being silent. The paradox of difference, the paradox of being both invisible and hypervisible. And so I embrace all the in-betweens and contradictions and do what I can to create spaces inside and outside where we can be critically engaged in resistance and revolution and rebuild our consciousness as Sylvia Winter says we must. And so I'm so grateful and blessed to have these experiences as they've made me even more committed to community organizing, creativity, and praxis. I wanted to begin with these thoughts that came from a piece I wrote last year in reflection about knowledge and my place or discomfort in the academy. And given the powerful lineup of people we have tonight, I wanted to bring in the personal and the political into this academic space as we trouble it and question it, not only through our words, but also our creativity and fire, and also our very existence. Thanks so much for Jaira, for making this happen, and for bringing us all together to have this conversation. Thank you. <laughs>